Hey there, welcome to video number one of the three wicked awesome productivity tricks to kick your butt into high gear. I'm Darren Hardy, publisher and founding editor of Success Magazine, New York Times bestselling author of several books, keynote speaker, CEO, mentor, and entrepreneur, which all sounds pretty cool, and it is, but let me be frank with you. I struggle staying focused, keeping my discipline, and battling my frustrations and disappointments in myself when I don't succeed as well. Like you and most people, I can be easily seduced by distractions, particularly the ones that prey on my human weakness to be liked, validated, or feel important. Regularly, my well-intended and carefully plotted plans all go to hell in a handbasket, as they say, as soon as the first bullet of the day is fired. I often find myself at the end of a long, hectic, and crazy busy day realizing I didn't get anything done that I intended to, leaving me feeling anxious, irritated, and stressed. Have you ever felt that way too? I know what it's like to want to be more productive and yet still fail, to fight day after day and lose more battles than you win. Here's what I want you to know before we get started. It's precisely because I faced these struggles that I was forced to search vigorously to find tools, tricks, and strategies to do battle with these human tendencies and weaknesses. So that's what I'm going to do for you here in these first few videos of the thousands of ideas that swirl around relentlessly on how to improve your productivity. I'm going to give you the three, not just any tips, but the wicked awesome productivity tricks that will kick your butt into high gear. Are you ready? Are you sure? I want to recommend that you do something that you might not have done in a while, and that is focus. Turn off your email, turn off your mobile phone right now, and anything else on your desk or in your environment that could fracture your attention. These are productivity tips after all. And let's say that tip number one is take back control of your attention and focus on one thing and listen deeply. Carve out this time as, let's say, your personal development work. Treat it as if you were in a one-on-one -on -one meeting with, let's say, the late Mother Teresa or the Queen of England or whomever you've ever wanted to meet. You wouldn't be scanning Facebook while they were talking or looking at your mobile phone, would you? Treat this time with that kind of respect and it will pay off for you. Okay, let's get cranking. And oh hey, in this first video, I'm gonna give you the insider secret to how super performers like Jack Nicholas or Michael Jordan, people at that level, perform under intense pressure with calm and nerves of steel. It's a big idea, one that you can use. So see if you can figure it out as we go along. It's in here. All right, this first trick I picked up from some of the most prolific and amazing entrepreneurs and business leaders that I know. You know those people who just seem to defy the natural laws of how the universe works? Again, as I mentioned in the introduction, what Steve Jobs was accused of, and that was having this reality distortion field where his expectation of what was possible was distorted by other people's perspective. But he seemed to be able to bend time with his reality distortion field. This bending of time was actually compressing time, compressing intense focus with intensity, applying pressure that is, creates these quantum leaps in outcome and results. In fact, it's the only way to really get something massive, something important off the ground and successful at all. Look at it like launching a rocket ship. The only way you're gonna get this 4.4 million pounds off a dead standstill is through a massive focus of incredibly concentrated energy, operating at full throttle power. Now the great thing about this is not only do you launch the rocket ship into orbit, but once it breaks through the atmosphere, you can actually back off the throttle, in fact, even drop your launch rockets entirely, and now you can propel your ship through outer space on a fraction of the energy and power. Most people don't ever really apply that concentrated focus, pressure, and power to anything long enough to get it up off the ground and into flight. But let's say that they do. What happens is, is they soon land the rocket ship and start working on something else, only to realize later that when they go back to where they left off, they've got to retake off all over again, expending that same incredible energy to just get it back into flight. 
Here's what it's like. Imagine you and I were having a race, and we both had 747s, capable of flying at 500 miles an hour. And we're going to start off in Los Angeles and head towards JFK in New York City. If I took off and only flew at 250 miles an hour, and you took off and flew at 500 miles an hour, but you had to land and take off in every state between those two points, 10 total, who do you think would win? Now, before you answer, remember that you are traveling at two times the speed once you're airborne. Well, the math is easy. I'd beat you by many hours and you would expend 50 times the amount of fuel and energy only to arrive much, much later. So the net result is this. By compressing my focus, time and energy into one flight, I can get across the country at least 10 times faster with 10% of the effort. That's what I call success compression. So here's the trick that you're using or the human behavior tendency that you're defeating with success compression. We all can suffer from what is called Parkinson's law. Parkinson's law states that whatever amount of time you've got to complete a project, it will take all that available time for its completion. Meaning, if you give yourself a week to complete a two hour task, then psychologically speaking, the task will increase in complexity and become more daunting as so to fill that entire week. It may not even fill all the extra time with more work, but the stress and tension about having to get it done will fill the time. But let's say you wake up and on your to-do list is make two client calls, fill out your expense report, pick up the laundry, and mail a package at the post office. If that's all you have scheduled for the day, oddly enough, it will take all day to do those four simple tasks. But let's say it's the day before you leave for a two week vacation and you have 30 items you need to complete in the same day. Oddly enough, you will get them all done in the same time span of that day. People don't become fully aware of how quickly some tasks can be completed until they test this principle by having to because of some urgent or impending deadline like leaving for a vacation. A big part of the problem is people don't get around to doing what they want to do. They end up only doing what they have to do. You see, when Ernest Hemingway was asked how to write a novel, he replied, the first thing you need to do is clean out the refrigerator. He meant that writers will do just about anything to avoid putting words onto the page. So you have to hack this human tendency. And this success compression strategy can actually reverse this tendency and tap into that superhuman capacity and ability. You see, you are far more capable than you push yourself to be. What you can accomplish is probably 100x what you are currently producing. And I'm not kidding, but our normal human weakness link is to sabotage our true capabilities. This hacks the normal tendency and kicks your performance into the superhuman mode that your real potential is capable of, if you just knew where the switch was. So here it is. You have to force tight, seemingly impossible deadlines on yourself. You need to kick yourself into the, what I call two minute drill, the day before vacation mode. You see, you have it in you and you can do it and you've done it before and you can actually live in that mode or in at least spurts. When you do, you crush it big time and you rock and amaze the people around you, particularly your competition. They won't know what hit them. So you can use this success compression in several different modes, 90 day cycles, monthly cycles, weekly cycles, daily cycles, several hour time blocks, and 90 minute what I call jam sessions. Oh, and then I'm gonna teach you a huge trick about how to absolutely baffle the people around you. They will assume you've indeed inherited some Superman or Wonder Woman superpower. So let's first start by tackling the 90 day cycles first. I built much of my, seemingly, to others at least, extraordinary success one 90 day cycle at a time. I had a mantra that I championed and ran many of my businesses around 90 days of pain for a lifetime of gain. As I mentioned, in most cases and in most endeavors or projects, 
It only takes about 90 days to really launch a project, but it requires an all out massive action, full throttle, all in effort to really get it off the ground. If you're going to launch a 90 days of pain for a lifetime of gain campaign, I'd ask that you negotiate with your family, your friends, your hobbies for those 90 days that you're going to be unavailable and totally consumed by this campaign. And if they allow you to fully invest in it with all you've got, without distraction, that you could provide them a lifetime of reward and undistracted attention. And it's true, whether you are negotiating with your family or your team or your clients, if they allow you to go headlong, fully focused, all in on one area of your business, the application of that superhuman effort will produce an outer space launch that will reward them for many months or many years down the line. So for instance, when I was building a business that was heavily reliant upon recruiting representatives to distribute my product in new markets across North America, I'd enter into a 90 day campaign. I divide the campaign into three 30 day segments. The first 30 days, I would do nothing but recruit new distributors. Because that was all I was doing and solely focused on recruiting, I would get into that zone of recruiting and my effectiveness and being able to get in and stay deep in that zone, my results would go up significantly. I could recruit more new representatives in 30 days because that was all I was doing than most anyone else would working on it sporadically over the course of a year. Then the next 30 days, I would sort through what I had. I would work with each of them to discern who was really ready to step up and play full out and who were just the pretenders. Then the last 30 days, I would work deeply and fully with those I found to be ready for leadership and develop them further and launch them independently. With this focused three-tiered 90-day campaign, I could produce far more in a quarter than what most everyone else did over 18 to 24 months. Then I would do this four times a year and absolutely devastate anyone else's chances of keeping pace. Success compression was my secret weapon. Now you can design this 90 day quarter for quarter campaign yourself and for your organization. It's best if you have a theme for the quarter and then break it down into these 30 day focused sprints. Oh man, I hope you're getting what I just laid at your feet. You do what I just spelled out and you will absolutely dominate in your space. How can I say that? Because I've used it and I've proved it. Don't just hear this, really get this and do this and you will crush it and come back and tell me how it worked. That will be my reward. Fair enough? Okay, you can use this success compression in even more compressed periods. Certainly creating a monthly closing deadline is valuable. Look at all you are doing and leverage these human tendencies. It's amazing how people won't do what they want, but they will do what they have to. When you create an impending deadline, it will activate something in themselves in ways that it should have on their own for their own best interest before, but it will only be so because they have to based on a closing deadline. Monthly calendar deadlines give you a great excuse to activate this urgent need to perform under pressure. Maybe it's time to reactivate highly incentivized monthly deadlines again. By the way, pressure and stress is your friend and your ally. This is something low achievers don't understand. Stress is a stimulus for growth, for development, and for progress. Great performers welcome it. They thrive on it. Pressure occurs where meaningful accomplishment is possible. You see, humans are designed not to cope with stress, but to thrive on it. It is the psychological stimulant that fuels our daily performances to great heights. The human body performs at higher levels when stimulated by pressure and stress. Stress and pressure is the doorway to success. On the opposite side, the absence of stress or feeling pressure is a sure sign of boredom, lack of interest and importance in what you do. Unless you learn to love pressure and perceive stress as an advantage, you are unlikely to join the ranks of high performers. 
use pressure and stress to draw out your greater performance and potential. Thus, unless you're on the 18th green of the Masters every day, or up the bat with the bases loaded in the bottom of the ninth at the World Series, or on the final drive to the end zone to win the Lombardi Trophy, you likely need to create or force pressure on yourself to activate your stress response superpowers, thus delivering on success compression. Drilling down a little further, you can create success compression in weekly cycles, dedicating a week to focus on one initiative with full throttle effort. And further, daily compressions, dedicating a deep, intense, fully focused effort on one thing for a complete start to finish day. Hey, you'll be surprised what you can achieve in a 24 hour span when all your creative capacity, uninterrupted, is dedicated to one project or initiative. It's productive power is so awesome that I initiated my own 100 disconnected days focus. For a full 24 hours at a time, I am disconnected from the communication matrix so I can get fully engaged in a single project without physical or psychological or emotional distraction. Man, I, I cannot tell you how the massive productive output those days are giving me. And there are so many ancillary benefits that I didn't even anticipate. It's incredible, truly. Now, drilling down a little further into success compression cycles, there are batch cycles where you can create your focus on certain related activities for several hour stretches. Look, it's better to get into flow and rhythm of an activity and stay there than to start and stop several activities during the same period. Those compressed batch cycles will be things like, let's say making sales calls or research or writing or planning or even meeting cycles, client follow-up calls, planning or brainstorming cycles, or even email cycles. The key is to work on one thing for a concentrated, sustained period of time. This allows you to enter the zone, the rhythm of the activity, which will help you wildly escalate the efficiency and effective that, effectiveness that you can have. Thus, of course, the results that you can produce in a compressed period of time. Even further are 90 minute jam sessions, which I outline in Insane Productivity. It shows you how to triple the productive output of the average Fortune 500 CEO, no joke, by 8 a.m. in the morning, every morning. You will become lethal with this strategy but refer to the Insane Productivity Program for the complete setup on that strategy. Okay, let me be sure that you're not missing the instruction here. Take every major project that you have and get it off the runway by applying an all-out massive action, full throttle engagement in it for a sustained, compressed period of time. I'll give you another example to be sure that you know what I'm talking about. When I decided to join the social media movement, I was way behind the curve and I knew nothing about it. So I decided to run a 90 day campaign on it. The first 30 days, I went full force into it. I gave a significant amount of my time, study and attention to just this focused effort. I learned everything that I could. I personally engaged in the process of every aspect of building and promoting my profile. The second 30 days, I iterated on my learnings focused on the few things I learned that were making the biggest difference and weeded out a bunch of things that I found to be a waste of time. Then the last 30 days, I focused on finding somebody to do the heavy lifting on what I now knew had to be done to drive a successful social media community. Then I could pull back almost entirely now while I create the content that ultimately gets published on social media, I don't actually do any of the posting and distribution myself. Just like a CEO doesn't lick his or her own direct mail envelopes, he or she creates the plan, approves the final design, but doesn't have to stuff the envelope, envelopes to execute it. Others can. But I wouldn't have the social community following, now millions of people strong, if I didn't launch it with a concerted, hardcore, full throttle success compression campaign to get it off the ground so that it could be carried by the momentum created in that initial rush of energy. So pick your important projects and run it through a success compression. Then activate success compression with as many activities as you possibly can. 
create a 30-day compression cycle, weekly, daily, three-hour chunks, 90-minute success compression cycles. Take whatever amount of time that you think something will take, and now I want you to slice it in half. Then give it full, hardcore focus for a sustained cycle time. You will be amazed and bewilder yourself and your competition at what you will achieve. All right. Let me be sure you're clear about what to do here. I don't want you watching this on your computer or your mobile phone screen and simply say, boy, look at that Darren, he sure can talk. This sure has been fun to watch. And then click over to your email icon and go about your previous uncompressed, less than successful than it could be habit patterns. No, I'm doing this to give you these hard earned, wicked awesome tricks for one purpose, help you kick some serious booty in your marketplace and do good by your family and the lifestyle that you are responsible for providing them. So let's roll up our sleeves and prepare to launch. Okay, here it is in simple terms. Number one, pick an important project that will have a big impact on helping you accomplish your big, hairy, and audacious goals. Got it? Okay, number two, what is the time deadline that you set to accomplishing it? Have you got it now? Now I want you to slice it in half. That will give you the needed pressure and stress that you need Remember, stress is your ally to jumpstart your higher level performance. Now, number three, how are you possibly gonna hit that deadline? Ah, success compression, that's how. Carve out chunks on your calendar for you to go full throttle on this project in particular. Maybe it's a full 50% of your day, every day for a week, a month, or maybe 90 days like my social media blitz was. And then lastly, four, attack it full throttle, all out with compressed and concentrated focus like it was the last two minutes of the Super Bowl and that you are behind and this is for all the marbles. Focus like that or the day before uh, a two week vacation with zero phone or internet access when you leave and you've got to get 50 things on your list done before the day is out. That kind of energy and focus. I tell you, if you really play at this level, you could take the previous deadline and slice it in half and slice it in half again and still pull it off. That is what Steve Jobs did with his team over and over again. This is what I see Jeff Bezos do with his team, Reed Hastings do with his team, Mark Zuckerberg with his team and many other fantastically successful people. They all have this reality distortion field. The reality is they all practice this wicked awesome productivity trick called success compression. And now you can too, but will you? Let's see. Declare that you will in the comments below and then be sure to come back and tell me about your new wicked awesome results. All right, we're just getting started. Hey, this is only video one in this three part series that I'm doing for you here. You could walk away right now and go absolutely crush your goals and devastate your competition just through leveraging success compression. Trust me, I know. It's one of my never previously disclo disclosed secret competitive weapons, and it works. Okay, this one only warmed you up. In the next video, I'm gonna go all in with you. I will show you how to play God. Not the George Burns, oh God, or the Morgan Freeman, Bruce Almighty type. I'm talking about in real life, I'll show you how you could possess the godlike super power of being able to manufacture new time. Seriously, actually create from what seems like thin air, new time. Time you don't have now and time you wouldn't have had in the future. Yes, it is supremely awesome as a trick and I'll reveal it to you in the next video. But now I want you to do me a favor. I'm laboring over these videos, hiring and paying for the film production crew, pointing the camera at me right now, who will then edit and polish all this up for you because I wanna make a positive impact in people's lives. These are tools of my pay it forward plan. So if you found value in this video, take the URL below and send it to three to five people that you know who could also benefit from this strategy and what is to come. All of this is free. You get to be a hero for helping them find it and I get to expand the number of people this effort can impact. If you wanna be super cool, pump it out to all your social channels. Hey, you get to be the cool kid on campus for finding this first and being the one to alert everyone to it. 
deal? Seriously, do that for me. There's no donate money button on this page. Instead, I'm only asking that you share the wealth with others.